Okay, now, during that time also, I guess, you developed this method, part of these NSF fellowships, right? The yes. National Science Foundation fellowships. You developed a method that I think our, our viewers would be very interested in learning more about for localized wireless and localized communications. Well, tell, yes, tell me a little yes. bit about that. I'm so happy that you asked because I love talking about that. Uh, it has a kind of esoteric name. It's called time reversal, but it's actually a very simple uh, thing to do in physics and what we do is we uh, use this method and we time reverse the waves that uh, can be any types of waves such as the ones that you use when you speak on your cell phone and the result of doing time reversal on waves is that you get two amazing things one is that you get to localize in space a signal in a desired location what that means is imagine, if you will, that you're in a building and you are in the fourth floor in office 412, and you want to com communicate securely and wirelessly only with a person in office uh, 505 in on the fifth floor, floor, on right. a different mm -hmm. floor. And so you can send with a thing called Data Blaster. You can actually send, and using this method, you, you ensure that the waves will only be focused at a certain time in that particular location. So the applications of localizing waves are numerous. You can imagine, for example, in medicine, uh, for the use of lithotripsy, which means kidney stone destruction, where you're going to be able to focus a signal to destroy only the specific kidney stone without having to intervene with a scope and find the, the, the stone. And you can actually kill that stone without damaging any of the surrounding tissue. Uh, other applications are underwater acoustic communication, uh, where you could communicate with a friendly submarine, but not with the enemy one, which is only, you know, a little bit, a few hundreds of meters away. Uh, other applications could be entertainment. Imagine that you go and you watch a conference, a lecture, or, or you're watching a concert at a big concert hall, and you want to translate it in Italian in your seat, and only five or ten centimeters away, you want to translate it in French. And you can do that using time reversal because you can actually focus the waves at a particular point. Well, how localized does it get? It actually, there's a phenomenon called super resolution, uh, and the name came up because you, you can actually, uh, in complicated or inhomogeneous environments, you can actually go beyond the diffraction limit, which means that you get to less than half of a wavelength. So depending on the signal you're using, sound, for example, uh, the way we're speaking now, the wavelength is of a few meters. So half of that would be 0.5 of a meter, say, or one meter. But if you're talking wireless signal with broadband frequencies, you're talking a, of a, a focusing space of you know, a few millimeters or a very tiny area. So you can actually. So obviously, get, this this yeah. could be used in in Wi-Fi or WiMAX Absolutely. communication, things like that. So you, you can envision people walking in the street for advertising, targeted advertising, and all of a sudden, they are walking by a store, The Gap, and The Gap decides to send a targeted advertise that only that person walking there can see it because it'll be focalized in front of their face, right there in a as a hologram or, or uh, on a screen that's placed right next to the store or something. So it's a, a targeted, localized advertising. So forget billboards. We've got wave boards coming, exactly. I guess. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. Yes, so so it also it. means that all of these guys that like to camp out outside some of these buildings and, and <laughs> surf off of the, the free Wi-Fi signals may have, may have to find <laughs> other means of getting <laughs> their means. Internet yeah. connections yeah, as well. Is right. that right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's yeah. very, very fascinating. Yeah. So, um, obviously, I think the applications for this are, are, are in, enormous. Yes. I, I assume that you've been getting some interest from companies Absolutely. and things that... Yes, and that's, uh, I think, where the engineers come in, because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard uh, us physicists are not that great at actually building stuff. <laughs> so that's where we, we come up with the ideas and we develop the method, but we need the engineers to actually develop the product so that it works and they, they make sure that it's something that people can use securely and, and e efficiently. Well, this ties back into your your show, The Science of Everyday Life, because 
these, I assume, are the kind of things that you want to help explain. What is a sound wave? What is a wireless wave? Those kind of things, right? Absolutely. I'm so glad that you pointed that out because some of the topics uh, for the episodes that I have planned are what's hot about nanotechnology, what is wireless, and how do people talk on their cell phones. Uh, other topics, I just uh, shot an interesting episode that ties with the sex and the city topic, and it's the physics of high heels, <laughs> which I think it's a great show because it embodies the concept of a thing that all people know about, stiletto high heels, and that uh, you know most women wear at some point in their lives. And then nobody really thinks that that's related to Isaac Newton's laws or some other famous physicist. And when you explain... Uh, things like a, like a high heel with physics, you realize there, there are things that people would never imagine, such as the fact that a 100-pound woman actually puts more pressure if she's wearing stiletto heels on the ground, more pressure per area than a 6,000-pound elephant. <laughs> so it's just fascinating. Ama fascinating things that I want people to realize that science is all around us and everything we do can be explained in some way or another by science, all the technology we use, everything that we, we look at in the world. And I want to bring back that understanding to people. Well, who better to <laughs> explain the science of stiletto heels than someone who, <laughs> whose friends call her the science babe, right? So uh, thank, thank you very you. much for joining me, Debbie, Debbie Berbiches. Keep an eye out for where, where we're going to find this, The Science of Everyday it's Life. It's going to be in the Internet, and the website is thesciencebabe.com. Thesciencebabe.com. Very well spoken, and thank you very much for joining us, Debbie. Thank Debbie you. Debbie Berbiches, I'm Kevin Shively here at the NYMEG World Headquarters, the New York Media Information Exchange Group here in New York City. Thank you very much for watching.